Evil Genius 2 is out and ready for you to take control for world domination. This builder packs a unique combination of gameplay elements that put multiple facets of strategy gamers to the test with some slightly silly graphics and humorous dialogue to go with it. And while most of you guys out there will be starting with the tutorial here, and you should, it's a really good one, sooner or later you're going to want to spread your wings and fly without your hands being held, discovering pretty quickly the significant change in difficulty between starting with the tutorial and without it. And that's where this video comes in. Hi, I'm Charlie. And in this video, I've got some things that I think can help you reign with supreme control in Evil Genius 2, giving you 10 helpful tips that I've come up with that aren't necessarily explained well in the game for early and mid-game Evil Genius 2, just to make it a little more manageable for you. Let's get started. Number 1. Build legal rooms close to the casino. When you first start out a game, you've got a really direct route to the front operation or casino, and with that, a free path to very nice territory for your primary minion barracks, mess hall, break room, etc. Quite a few essential and very important rooms in Evil Genius 2 are not illegal, and will not look suspicious to any snooping investigator that comes by. Placing these rooms close to the entrance, or at least down the path of lesser resistance from your casino, will lead to stalling agents a little bit longer, as they walk around and check out things that you don't really mind them seeing in the first place, before finally looking into the deeper places. Plus, an added benefit of situating these particular rooms nearby the door means that when your diversions fail, and they begin to fight you anyways, there's at least plenty of reinforcements right next to the fight to take down the threat fast. Number two, combining room spaces. Now, while the tutorial walks you through creating separate rooms for each purpose, the game itself doesn't actually require you to have walls in rooms at all, at least not for most of them. In fact, you could technically have almost everywhere just wide open if you wanted to, although I don't recommend it personally. It'll make placing traps and other types of things that you'd like to do in this game a little bit more difficult. But still, the fact that rooms do not really need to be exclusively spaced means that you can create combinations of areas that fit a unique purpose, such as, for example, having a mess hall within your barracks like this, or placing an armory and power center right into a prison area, giving you constant guard availability for escapes and localized incineration when you're done with them. I might even say to put an infirmary here as well, just so that they can heal nearby too. I also like to make a corridor space outside my casino like this, just to stop disguises before they even enter. A little camera here does a lot of good. There's loads of cool combinations that make sense in Evil Genius 2, so experiment with them for yourself. Number three, the vault is not needed. The first thing the tutorial tells you to do is to build a vault to hold your gold. And this is actually totally unnecessary and a big money sink early on if you do. In reality, as you play through the beginning era of the game, you're going to be spending money like crazy, almost always waiting for the money to tick up a few thousand just so the next power generator will build, or waiting on a room expansion, etc. If you're constantly growing and expanding, you're also constantly spending money, and a vault is just a waste of resources early on. You can hold up to $40,000 without even having a vault, and you'll rarely even have half of that before the initial main quest is complete anyways. So wait on the vault, your wallet will thank you. Number four, valets are super powerful. Valets are, in my opinion, the most useful minion type in the early game by a long shot. Not only are they the only type of minion that can directly make you passive income on the casino floor as they exist, but they are also the best at reducing investigation effectiveness against you. Baccarat and Roulette tables are outstanding ways at reducing an agent's capabilities against you by reducing their skill level, making their disguises less effective, as well as reducing many of their other abilities, like discovering traps before they go off. Not only that, but the cocktail bars and the showroom stage are very effective at reducing an investigator's resolve, which is effectively their willingness to do their job or pursue you. Reduce an agent's resolve to zero, and they simply leave without a fuss. No more questions asked and no suspicion of anything. With an effective valet force, you'll need far less guards trained in the end, and you'll find yourself ticking off the forces of justice slower as a result. Number five, the give and takes of schemes. Each scheme on the map has a cost, and what cost you're willing to go for entirely depends on you and your situation, but not all schemes are worth the same value to you. Unless these get rebalanced after release, and they may, you can generally get more money for less minions as long as you're willing to spend more time. 
That also means less micromanagement on the map, FYI. Likewise, you can get a lot of money in a short time if you're willing to fork over more minions. Now, if you have a ton of yellow shirts already, these types of trades may be worth it to you. But if you give up too many minions at once to the map, you may find yourself lacking staff back home. And if that happens, well, you may need to purchase new minions immediately, and that costs you 2,000 apiece. Yeah, this 10K purchase here gives you five. This is basically the immediate hiring price of a single yellow shirt minion off the chopper. You can use that cost basis if you'd like to determine which schemes are more economically worth it to you. Paying 10,000 to get rid of heat when you are really low on minions and really high on heat, it may be worth it more than say spending three minions to send over and spend 20 minutes on the map. Also keep in mind that while your minions are spending that 20 minutes on the map, you're also not generating income in that region, so there might be a trade-off there in just paying for it, reducing it almost immediately, and then getting right back to work making money. It, it might end up being a better fit for you. Also keep in mind that the rewards for schemes are rewarded to you in portions over time on the time limit for those schemes, not something paid to you all in bulk. So even if you can't quite finish a scheme before a lockdown happens, it could possibly still be worth it, uh, you know, getting a portion of it at least, and then canceling it near the end uh, to lower the heat, depending on how much of it you were able to finish. Later on, as you progress further into the game, you can upgrade your networks and get even better schemes that take different types of resources. Pretty cool. Number six, you can redesign the casino. One element of the game that may be overlooked by a lot of players is that your base of operations isn't simply the part behind the casino, it's the casino as well. You have full control over how large this place is and the shape of it, and you can manipulate the space using the combination of rooms stuff that I mentioned earlier in the video if you'd like to as well. You can even take out a huge chunk of your casino and use it for traps. I mean, it's effective, it works. Install cameras by making small sections of corridors, or build new walls and make new rooms for staff to hang out in if you wish. It's up to you. I also kind of enjoy the various decorations that come in the game as well, and some of them are actually pretty positive for your minions. Actually, that brings me to number seven. Decorations aren't always just for looks. The various decor items featured in Evil Genius 2 aren't something that most players are going to spend a lot of time looking into in the early game. In fact, I played for close to 10 hours before I even really noticed what options were available for them. I just had too many other important things I wanted to build and never really looked at the tab. While many of the decor items are free to place and are just there to look at and add the aesthetic to your lair, many of these decor items actually do cost a little something and actually have positive effects for your minions as well. Not only that, but some, such as these wall-mounted chairs, are excellent ways to manipulate where minions hang out and spend their time when they do have a break, almost turning these things into unofficial guard posts, kind of. Give some a look the next time you log into the game. You might find some of them that are useful for you. Number eight, bringing down the heat. Heat is a very important component of the game that you'll want to take seriously. In the beginning, it doesn't seem like it's all that big of a deal, but if you don't manage it appropriately and vigorously throughout the game, you'll find yourself being visited by stronger investigators, or worse yet, uh, the forces of justice will just get tired of investigating you all together and will bring out the big guns. Literally, like with soldiers or super agents. Solid heat management in the map layer equals lower strength forces for longer, giving you time to build out your defenses and set your traps throughout. You'll really want to take advantage of that time for traps too, because it won't be long until super agents start showing up on the map, teleporting into your vault, assuming you have one, wink wink. They really suck to deal with, and you can avoid them longer if you don't allow heat to get too out of hand spend the cash or send the staff in to reduce the heat in regions before they lock them down. It's worth it, at least for a little while. Number nine, avoiding super agents. Speaking of super agents uh, from number eight, once they begin appearing on your map screen, they can be avoided entirely if you're diligent enough and do not wish to engage them yet. When viewing on the map screen, you'll be able to clearly see their location, either by noticing them standing on the map or by zooming all the way out and seeing their special icon in the region. You'll also see them appear in the region's description when you select it. As long as they are in the region, you can avoid the agent by simply not doing any schemes at all in that region until they leave and move to another. The agents are using information from your minions during schemes and using it to gain access to you. 
don't give them minions and they cannot be interrogated to give information. When you've built yourself up a force that can actually handle them later, then it's time for your showdown. Now remember, these guys can also be captured as well. Just like any other agent that comes and visits you, if you reduce their vitality and their skill, you can capture them. And super agents plus brainwashing anyone? Yeah, maybe you can get them to join your team. I don't know. It's just an option. Go for it. And finally, number 10, experiment with the trap combos. Traps are awesome, especially once you start unlocking some of the more advanced ones to build within your base. They aren't all just for protection either. Some traps, like the pinball bumpers, are meant to be used in combination with other traps for combo effects. Got them both. Ding, ding. Oh, ding, ding. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Oh my god! And... <laughs> yes, it works the whole way! <laughs> Whatever you want to try, especially as you get deeper into the tech tree, you can experiment with some really fun combinations. Expand your lab and your science team so that you can get in there and learn all about the most fun parts of Evil Genius 2. And with that, we're at the end of our fun little tips video. I hope this helps some of you out there make the most of the game and get started on the right foot in Evil Genius 2. If you liked this video and found it helpful, give it a thumbs up and maybe let YouTube know that you thought so. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to and join me for my own playthrough of Evil Genius 2 with Emma on the second island right here on YouTube. Special thank you to Rebellion for the opportunity to gain early access to Evil Genius 2 and a big thank you to you for watching. Have fun being evil. Bye-bye.